Now on Enough Said with K fans Dan Barrero. He's not afraid to fight back, and he tells it like it is, and that's the other problem. He's not telling it like it is. And Justin Guard. The one thing that is going to get old for me is the the whole nice question nonsense, where it wasn't a nice question. Right. Told it, you're the president of the United States. This isn't a reality show. Enough said. I was totally surprised. I'm just, you know, I've had other conversations with the past, but never about a resignation. I didn't seek it. I didn't ask for it. I talked with Ed Mondale earlier today and, you know, just discussed the situation. I did not ask for his resignation. I didn't. I don't have the authority to ask for his resignation. The board, he reports to the board. Welcome back. Another edition, Enough Said, starts now. My name's Dan Barrero. Justin Gard is with me as usual and Lori Fisher, as usual, in the control room. Lori, hi. Hi, guys. Breaking this week, Ted Mondale and Michelle Helm Kelgan both resigning from the Minnesota Sports Facilities Authority. They had been highly criticized for the use of the state-owned luxury suites at U.S. Bank Stadium. When it comes to family and friends, Kelm Helgan said in a le letter, it was in the public's interest for her to step down, and if she could start over, MSFA would have had a public discussion over the use of the suites. She also added that the recommendations from the legislature's auditor's report fails to hold all publicly owned and operated sports venues to the same set of standards. Dan, were you surprised by these resignations? No, I, I can't say that I was. The only, I think, encouraging thing for me is that Ted Mondale was part of the sweep. Because I've, I've never quite understood how it has all fallen on Michelle Kelm sure. Hagen, and none of it has fallen on, on Ted Mondale. And, you know, there's been some for criticism from the beginning about whether the, you needed these two jobs. Seems think, redundant. Combo platter, $300,000. Nice to, deal. Which is a nice deal if yeah. you can get it. And, you know, it, the whole deal here is, are we going to replace, the, there's already talk about how we're going to replace it. And I'm not convinced that we're going we're going from five to seven where there, it looks like, again, they're going to be political appointees, just the other side of the aisle is going to get to maybe try to get the majority of them. I'm not sure that's going to get us in any better place. But in the end, somebody had to pay, blunders were made, and these are the two people that I think pretty much, as even now the governor finally has admitted after trying to turn them into martyrs earlier, had to go. A lesson, if you have the golden goose, treat the golden goose very, very carefully, right? They killed this golden or, goose. Or... Or distribute it. Well, that's the other thing. Uh, to the both Democrat, Democratic hacks and Republican hacks. Exactly. If you're going to have a bunch of tickets to give away, make sure every gender, every race, and perhaps most important, every political party <laughs> is represented. Yes. Because I don't think they would have been in this. Uh, uh, pro they wouldn't have had this issue, I think, if they were more dispersed and if they were more upfront about it. And when they were caught with their hand in the they cookie didn't jar, act like. They, they were feeling sorry for themselves. They just tried to sweep it under the rug and say, everybody else yeah. does it. And th th these guys had amazing gigs. And I, I guess they probably did have to lose their jobs. You always feel bad when people lose their right. jobs. We've had so much fun with this story, mostly just because of the ridiculous way they tried to explain it. And we talked about it on the radio and on TV. So I feel bad that they lost their jobs. But at the end of it, it's, man, you had everything. No, they, they You had they, everything by the tail, and you just completely messed it my up. My sympathy is limited because yeah. they earned it. I think they earned a position. Now, don't again, abuse is it, the power. Has it become a political game? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. There is irony here. Um, what we consider big in this state compared to Minnesota. You remember when the Cubs made their World Series run? Yes. The big story out of Chicago was that the city aldermen had a news conference in which they complained that the Cubs were going to force them to no longer be able to pay face value for their playoff tickets. Yeah. And the, it shows a certain level of audacity that you're not only going to not, you know, you don't want to keep that secret. You want to tell people, hey, we we're getting these tickets at face value, and by God, we should have been able to get them in the postseason as well. A lot of gall and gumption. So sure. There are levels. And this is not Illinois-level corruption by any means, but it was still... A, a great deal of tone deafness. When it's a public facility like this, you got to be a little bit more careful about how you go about the business of, hey, come on in and hang out with us. And when us. people already think you have great gigs, we've talked about the salaries, I think since we found out what they were. That goes back a couple of years yes. when this commission was formed or the authority was formed. So when it's already public record that people are already asking questions yes. about, we're paying how much for how many people and what are they doing? Don't take it a step further and abuse it more and, and just get perk after perk after this? perk. How about, I think the Star Tribune had this idea in an editorial. How about we don't make this political at all? There are no political appointees. How about we, we, we find just some professional, one person who regularly is going to report to the people he, has to, he or she has to report to, 
instead of this political game, because it so easily becomes politicized. Yeah, and it's this. manipulated. That's then. the issue. That's a good idea. Enough said. We have to move on. Next up, President Trump plans to announce another executive order next week related to his previous immigration travel ban that was suspended. In a news conference, he also talked about Russia, the media, and defended his administration. Take a listen. I inherited a mess. It's a mess. This administration is running like a fine-tuned machine because the press honestly is out of control. The level of dishonesty is out of control. Russia is fake news. Russia, this is fake news put out by the 77 minutes long press conference. He covered a lot of topics and there were several angry and awkward moments with reporters. Dan? Well, the, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the, he, here's where I'm, I'm not sure I'm in the majority opinion. I, there were, there were several moments where I'm going, you, uh, President Trump, you think the media is the enemy. You think the courts are the enemy. Sometimes you're, you're your own worst enemy. And yeah. your in, inability to accept that is a, a late, major part of the problem. That said, am I crazy in saying I don't mind news conferences that are different than what we're used to, that are a little, more, little less buttoned down, that over the years I've actually Informal. found most of them not all that helpful. Most of them too serious, too buttoned down, and the. So idea, you like the entertainment? I don't even mind if the reporters and 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 the guy up at the at the podium are, going are doing back and more forth. sparring. Yeah. I was not as offended by that. Sit down, as sit some down, people, because a lot sit of down. people, it's like, you know, now that's the problem. How far does it go? Um, that said, people, I got some emails yesterday from people saying, you know what, that's why I, I voted for him. He he's not afraid to fight back, and he tells it like it is, and that's the other problem. He's not telling it like it is. He's telling He's it how, telling he, thinks it how is, he thinks it or is. Or wants it to be. And, and, and in, on many occasions, if you want to say the media is making some stuff up, he's making some stuff up. And that's the part that some of the Trump supporters tend to leave out of the discussion. They're, they're pretending he's telling it like it is. He's not always telling it like it is at all. But it is working for his supporters, and no I question. think that is his entire point. And that's why, yeah, as, as I was thinking about it, I came up with another conspiracy theory. You know I've been big on those lately. I don't know why. Well, but now, do you know the Democrats, according to polls, are now bigger on conspiracy? Since Trump took office, that makes sense the to Dems me. are now going skyrocketing on conspiracy Maybe theories. Maybe that answers the and question. And Republicans are not as into them. Isn't May that funny? Well, I, I never considered myself a Democrat before, but yeah. maybe just check that, <laughs> and check that box. I, I think what he's doing... Well, he's doing a lot of things, but the one thing that is going to get old for me is the the whole nice question nonsense. Where well, wasn't a nice question? Right. Told it. You're the president of the United States. This isn't a reality show. There are going to be some questions that you don't like. The journalists are doing their jobs if they're not, or they're not doing their jobs if they're, if they're if just they're asking up. the right. softball questions. Yeah. And so that's going to get annoyed and you, or annoying for me. And you know, one thing that you're an old uh, writer and an old journalist. What's one thing you don't want to do if you want to guarantee nice questions? What's one thing you don't do? You don't demand, you don't nice, demand questions, nice questions, right? And you don't they're going to fire back. They're going to fire yeah. back. They're going to dig even harder. They're going to say, I'm going to do my job. Right. They're going to try to dig up dirt. But I think that's all part of the conspiracy because now the media is going to keep digging. They are going to keep pushing. They are going to keep answering questions. And he's going to be able to keep perpetrating that. The essential Trump contradiction is one tweet is about all the Russian stuff is fake news. But on the other hand, another tweet is, we're going to get to the bottom of these leaks, the leaks. of information yeah. that is being leaked, which would suggest that some of it might actually be accurate. So it can't be both. But in Trump's world, I guess it can be both. And that's basically what we're dealing and with. And in our world, we don't have 77 minutes, so we have to move on. <laughs> There's a new award that will honor the best high school basketball player in the state in honor of Chisholm's Bob McDonald. This after the owner of the Mr. Basketball Award, Ken Lean, made some anti-Muslim remarks on social media. He had been the chairman of the award since the 70s and has since resigned and apologized. He deleted all his social media accounts. Justin, what are people thinking when they put this kind of stuff out there on social media? Not sure. I mean, we're always told, think before you hit send. And I know we're going to get to some Grammy stuff later. I had to think before I hit send like seven times because I didn't want to get in the uh, Beyonce fans meet grind. You're in it. You're going to be in it. Anyway. That's some foreshadowing yeah. for later. I don't know Ken Lean really at all. I've met him maybe once or twice. Uh, but the one thing I thought was telling throughout this whole thing is how quickly the coaches mobilized once these mm -hmm. tweets got moving a little bit. And there were very few coaches coming to his defense for the body of work because there's 40 years we're talking yeah. about where he's been the face of this. And you know, there is no difference between his social media and Mr. Basketball's social media. So he's kind of been anonymous through this whole thing. But nobody really came to his defense very quickly, which to me kind of signified what they thought well, of him just generally. That should have told him that even at the start when he said, hey, I'm going to apologize and I'm going to just kind of try to ride this out, 
that I think it finally, that's probably why it set in. He wasn't going to be able to ride it out. And yeah. part of the problem with, and again, there are times where I believe, I push back on the notion that if you offer a controversial tweet, you got to be done. Forever, I, yes. I, I despise that's that. That's a scary that, way to go. Itch that has to always be scratched. That said, in his case, there were a number of tweets, and they were so general in their savagery of one religion, basically, yes. in San, including Somalis coming here. They were so broad Bad that language. he left himself in, in no position to properly defend himself because I don't think in this case there was anything to defend. No, and the, the coaches moved extremely quickly yeah. to say, I think it was the Sibley coach that started it, wrote a big letter, and that got going very, very quickly. Yeah. And the, the idea for Bob McDonald is terrific if you want to separate the two. Uh, one of the most historic and legendary coaches that we've ever had here. So I love all that, but it was very interesting to me. You would think he would have garnered some goodwill right. over 40 years of doing the, the most prestigious basketball award that we have for high school basketball here, and it appears there was no goodwill no. built up over those 40 years. No, and that, and that probably pretty much told us. I still maintain it's hockey's biggest problem that any of this stuff gets tolerated at all. I it's mean, interesting what sports. they get mad about. It's interesting, though, what they do get mad about. Yeah. And it was universal. And the national people after that game, that was the biggest. I didn't think I would ever get a technical for yelling at my own player. So he thought I was yelling at him. Probably deserved it. If he thought I was yelling at him, I deserved a technical. But I was yelling at Reggie. I'm so proud of our guys. Akeem didn't play great. He just made a winning play at the end. Eric Curry made winning plays. And Nate Mace is one of the best guards in the conference. Welcome back. Topic four, the Gophers are rocking and rolling on a four-game winning streak. They beat Indiana with a last-second shot on Wednesday night. Justin, is this a tournament team? I think they are a tournament team. I think they've put themselves Which in... Which tournament? The NCAA tournament. I mean, we're familiar with the NIT. We're familiar Which with the NIT, clarify. the CBI, and the College Insider. We're and we're familiar with the preseason NIT. Yeah. We're familiar with a lot of tournaments except the NCAAs. I think we've only gone like 10 or 11 times that count. There's a handful that we went, but we're not supposed to remember them, including 1997. We cheat a lot. They put themselves in well, a very a advantageous lot, situation, haven't they? Where after the five-game yeah. losing streak... They've rebounded nicely. They've won a couple of games on the road. They've won games they needed to win at home, including this last Wednesday night against Indiana. Would have been a bad loss, the way Indiana's been going, where their RPI is, all of that. And they found a way. I, don't, I was there. They were down five. They were down six. And I'm impressed you didn't storm the court. Well, I was and sitting the, in the upper deck. Okay, it was it considered. Hard. It was considered to run yeah. down there. But you know how Williams Arena is. It's hard if you're up top to get down low very, very jump, quickly. That's a long way. I'm not going to do that. No. Not for Indiana when you were a six-point favorite. But they put themselves in a good spot. And the way their schedule works out the rest of the way, if they just win the three home games, they're a cinch. I think if they win two of the three home games, they're in pretty I good think, shape. And I think more importantly... This is still a very young team overall. Yes. Young in the sense that I'm not saying you, you don't it's it, you, you can't evaluate them and that that's an excuse, but most of these guys who they're they're losing Akeem, right? They're basically, losing Springs, and Springs, that's it. and that's basically it. Yep. Allegedly some more good talent coming. We never know on that. But the point is you've still, you got almost the entire team coming back. They are clearly headed finally in a better direction. Uh, is I'm willing to accept that if you're willing to grant that part of the reason this season looks so good is last season was so pathetic. Yes. It was a, even by Gopher standards, we've had some bad seasons. It was the worst season it they've ever had. awful. It was terrible. And that's making a, basically, a 500 Big Ten season uh, look good. Now, maybe they're going to end up even a little bit above 500. Yep. But they've, they've, they've had a nice season. They're, they're a lock in the, for the NCAA, uh, barring a collapse. A meltdown. Think, they've got five games left. I don't think left. there's any reason to think they're going to get. they got a nice balance of players, and that's what I think makes not just the present intriguing for the first time in a while but the future intriguing as well that's and why it was so important for me at least yes. to get this group in the tournament yes. because i do think they can do something fairly special next year Have whatever that the is elite eight this year this I know year that's no. your favorite term elite elite i do oh yeah. that would be great yeah, would think be about it pj yeah. would have to go he would take okay we have it. to we have to move on let's get to some video that's actually kind of tough to watch the nhl suspended gustav nyquist for six games after his spear and high stick to the face of wild defenseman jared spurgeon it happened Sunday after Spurgeon cross-checked Nyquist. Luckily, it ended with just a few stitches. But this wasn't the only violence on the ice this week, Dan. No, it was. Uh, what well, was the next game? Ducks guy. Ducks guy yep. ends up. Uh, was it Vermette? Vermette. He ends up giving a love tap to the prodding official. Prodding the official because he didn't like how he handled the faceoff. Basically, yes. right? That's, not basically. That's exactly that's right. What, what exactly what happened? Yeah. Now, in, the, in this case, the ref was not hurt. I didn't even go down to the ice. I don't 
no. thing. No, he turned around and said, what are you doing? But, I, you know, every time, it is amazing uh, the, how this, well, I, I, maybe this is encouraging. Maybe this is a sign of progress because Hockey Nation, at least the people I paid attention to, on the Nyquist play, they didn't, most of them didn't seem to buy Nyquist's lie, as far as I'm concerned, right. that, oh, I didn't mean to wedge my stick under the visor and get him right next to the eyeball when it was very clear that he did. He, yes. I don't care what his history is. I don't care if he's the most mild-mannered guy since Clark Kent. Uh, it looked to me like he was trying to do it. And Hockey Nation, I thought largely, now maybe it's because it would happen to our guy, uh, basically said, no, 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 we ain't buying that. Even nationally. Nationally they and did. That's what I was going to say. that maybe is a helpful shift because I still maintain it's hockey's biggest problem that any of this stuff gets tolerated at all in a way that would, would be major scandal in other in It's other interesting sports. what they get mad about. It's interesting, though, what they do get mad about. Yeah. And it was universal. And the national people after that game, that was the biggest talking point. It wasn't that the Wild won. It wasn't that they right. with the, their point total. Six which games I, is not enough. Probably not. Apparently he convinced them that he didn't mean it. I, don't, I, I, I think it's got to be 10 minimum. I would say only because of his past history, yeah. they probably gave him a break there. Yeah. But you saw, you saw right away, his reaction was, I don't think... Oh, he flopped. No. I think it was, oh, I can't believe I what did I, that. What, exactly. Why did I do that? And I, I never do anything like yeah. this. And really, Jared Spurgeon's like smaller than me. So a cross check from him, I don't think should bother anybody. That's okay, neither here up. nor there. And keep, but. And keep, and, and keep your, your, we quit your weapons away from the refs. That's why that ends up <laughs> yes. being probably a 10. Automatic game, 10. Is you, 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 even if it's a love tap, you can't do that. You love the love tap, well, don't you? That's your favorite. There's the a love tap. fest between Adele and Beyonce. Let's get to that. There's still a lot to say about the Grammys especially when it comes to Adele beating Beyonce for Album of the Year, Adele's speech praising Beyonce, and Beyonce's performance. Dan, what do you say about the ongoing debate of singer versus production? Well, I, I would say that it's a little unfair to Beyonce to do what Carlos Santana did, one of my favorite artists yeah, ever. Yeah, just call her a performer. And basically say that's all she is. I think he's got a point in general about the trend musically, but I think he picked a bad example there. That said, I don't think you have to be sent off to jail if you don't think Beyonce is the greatest performer ever. Or if, as you said, you found her performance that night rather pompous. I didn't rather get it. Rather yeah. arrogant. Rather, let's get over yourself a little bit. But if you say that out loud, uh, there are people who want you rubbed out. And that's, <laughs> that's a little much, okay? Yeah. You're allowed to have different opinions on Beyonce. But uh, uh, what do they call Beyonce's fans? There's a name for them. You know oh yeah, no. Lori might know. She's it, probably yeah. one. Well, they call her Queen B. They Queen call B, her and Bae. they got the, bae, the yeah, I don't know what it got is. Her. Yeah, I don't know. They got to calm down just a little bit because she is. She gets a lot of. I don't think she gets a lot of bad pun. She's never criticized. That's why I was afraid to do it. I talked about the tweet earlier in the show. I had a tweet. Don't let the Beyonce tear. Letty to win. go. Well, you see what's happening to Santana. He's yeah, had to he's, apologize. He's, well, not only that, he's retiring from music. Yeah, I think he's just shutting he's it just down. Shutting it all he's down. saying that's yeah, it. I can't mess. There's no margin for error on Twitter anymore, and I'm a little nervous even talking about it on this show because. This will Lori live, will get a couple letters. This will live forever. I had the tweet during the nine-minute performance, nine minutes in the Grammys. That's like two hours That's in real long. time, by the way. That's too long. And I went back and forth three or four times, and she was still going, yeah. and it never got anywhere where I looked at it and said, oh, now I understand. It was just a, it, it reeked to me of, in two weeks, there's going to be a press release that says, we were just seeing if we could get credit for anything. We were just seeing if we could and get the answer is celebrated for anything. And I was heartened a little bit that I did get some support that a lot of people didn't get the performance But either. they're afraid to say it. They just went along with the mob because of the fans, like you said. It, it, it's a, it's a... So this means, basically, when after two good years here, he leaves to go to Notre Dame. It's his. He can take Row the Boat with him. We got no, we can't whine about it. We right. can't complain about it. It's his. We just got to sell it. Time for the lightning round. We can really row the boat now. The catchphrase is now the intellectual property of Gophers head football coach, PJ Fleck. Justin. Are you a large or extra large? Because I want to know. I prefer, I don't like snug, so I go extra so large. So do a little extra large, give yeah. yourself a little breathing room. I'd rather have an oar. Well, I can get you an oar for sure. Right. There's going to be oars all over town. Trust me, you're not going to have to worry about oars. Now, so this means basically when after two good years here, he leaves to go to Notre Dame. It's his. He can take Row the Boat with him. We got no, we can't whine about it. We right. can't complain about it. It's his. We just got to sell our shirts now and hope that we got a good deal in a Shark Tank-like deal. We got a good deal. Okay, Sounds like a bargain up. for him. 50 grand. 50 nice. A lighthearted moment at the White House. Target CEO Brian Cornell met with President Trump this week along with other big retailers. When Cornell 
introduced himself with Target, Trump said with a smile, Target, right? So it's not just a Minnesota thing, Dan? He really likes us, doesn't he? He loves us. Isn't well, he special? almost won the state. He yeah. should know yeah, what our one of our very, flagship very organizations well, I didn't is. know. Is, this, is that a Minnesota thing? I've or do we just want to think it's a Minnesota thing because we think we're cool? I've never really gone. I've never really talked about Target or Target I, outside of Minnesota. You're but probably I, afraid to. It's well, a controversial I know, subject. It is. I know really I've heard it growing up. Year, I think it's more of a, uh, well, I'm not even going to say it. That's, Be careful. That's way too controversial. I'm not going to say right, that. Right, but it definitely is a Minnesota thing. But now it's gone worldwide that's like great. Target. I we're, hear people typing excited. right now. Well, that was short-lived Charles Oakley's ban at Madison Square Garden. It seems like everyone uh, made up after his outburst last week. Dan? No, I don't think they've made up completely. Get Michael Jordan. Now involved. Oakley, isn't Oakley saying, I got to have an apology first? I, and I don't so. know if he's going to get an apology out of the whole thing. I, I Am I allowed to say I'm kind of <laughs> sick of the whole thing? I, I mean, I love, I love Charles Oakley. He's a he's great a player. Nice player, yeah. et cetera. But honest to God, the it, it's turned into this sort of silly soap opera where, frankly, I don't think anybody looks But it's good. the New York Knicks, so it okay, fits we'll right in. Okay, we'll move on then. True. Get Jordan involved. <laughs> Besides this beautiful weather right now, another sign of spring, 15 Major League Baseball teams held their first workouts for pitchers and catchers. Justin. Hope Springs Eternal, 57 to 60 degrees, I think, today. And really, the surest sign of spring is if you follow the reports from Fort Myers. Yeah. Multiple Twins pitchers have already given up moonshot that's on, home that's runs. That's uncalled for. What do you mean? That's that nice. In batting practice, they've already a couple of windshields have already been cracked because not, of the Twins hold pitchers. Hold on a minute. They've not had a chance yet to work with our new target framing genius catcher. Oh, the catcher. Once that is established, all of these pitchers are going to look like Cy Young candidates. Were you a big spring training guy back in the day? Like 15, I think it's overrated. Really? Yeah, I think it's vastly overrated. I think all preseasons are ball now. guys. It's okay. Yeah. But it doesn't, okay. it's not life transforming the way ball guys like to think. Here we There's go. No poetry for me. This might be a downer monopoly voting to get rid of the, oh, I have it right here, the thimble. Oh, no. Nice prop. Thanks. Um, I own it. It's mine. Um, it's part of a move to get like the next generation interested in Monopoly, but some of the ideas out there are emoji, hashtag. It's making me feel old. Um, we'll find out the winners next month. What would you have gotten rid of, Dan? I would probably. Milbarrow? I can't even. Remember. I haven't played Monopoly in so long. Was I know. there was there a uh, was there a cannon? There may have been a, a cannon. Game? No, I think there. May, that sounds right. There yeah. may have been a cannon. I haven't played in a long time I, either. I believe in nonviolence, so I might have gotten rid of the cannon. Well, the other thing too, they're, they're eventually I think going to get a, rid of the board. I'm sure you can already do this, where you can, you and I from our own houses could play Monopoly against each other just on our iPads. No, or you can do like that, that now. Well, the, I figured you could. The president has already decreed that Park Place must be changed to Trump Place. Is in that the next right? Generation of Monopoly. Okay, I and last that, up, start saving, especially you, Dan. For the first time ever, American Girl will sell a boy version of its pricey dolls. Logan Everett is on the market. He's a drummer, and he comes with a drum kit. What do you think? Oh, perfect. <laughs> the drums, I think, are the most the thing that parents are going to hate the most. Know what to Get say. the I drums don't... out of the house. Yeah. Nobody wants drums in the I house. I guess I'm surprised it's it took taken this, them long? this long. Don't you think? Yeah, Logan Everett. It's about time How Logan is this came along. Go? I think it's going to go well. You, so you would what's know. The, what's the so is who, who's the target audience here? I would think the same people. Okay, I would, same I would, people. I would still much, think yeah. so. Would, you have Leah, right? But see, we You're, have Leah, that uh, doll of the year last year. Don't forget. I know. I'm a little Don't disappointed. Forget. You should have gone for an under.